Hello, and welcome to the story of Latte. I'd like to begin by asking a question. Latte just celebrated its 60th anniversary last year. What is your image of Latte? The number one confectionery company in Japan? The owner company of a professional baseball team? Both of those are correct, but that's not all there is to Latte. Latte has surged into a global enterprise now representing all of Asia, with group overall sales of $43 billion. Looking at the business divisions that come together to produce those sales, from distribution retail and heavy industries to our founding industry of foods, as well as hotel service and finance, you can see that Latte is now a large conglomerate enterprise. Let's look at each division in detail. Foods. The foods division is the origin of Latte. Our confections, which have long been enjoyed by consumers in Japan, are backed by high quality and safety. In addition to gum, chocolate, ice cream, cookies, candy, ham, and beverages, we have also entered the restaurant market with our fast food chain and the like. Loteria has established a presence in Japan, Korea, Taiwan, China, Vietnam, and Indonesia. Distribution and Retail Lotte boasts powerful distribution capabilities that support Korea's largest department store chain, as well as supermarkets, convenience stores, and online shopping malls. Hotel and Service Lotte manages various businesses in the hotels and service industry, from our five-star Lotte Hotel in Korea and our resorts and city hotels, to Lotte World, the world's largest indoor theme park as well as movie theaters, golf courses, and professional baseball teams that are popular in both Korea and Japan. Heavy Industries Latte's petrochemical business is a leader in Asia. As a company, we have erected landmarks around the world, including large construction to residential housing, using comprehensive materials, machinery, and field equipment. Finance Latte is proud to hold up one corner of the financial power in Asia with our business in credit cards, insurance, and capital. In this way, by combining the synergy of our group businesses, we are accelerating our activity in every industry. Let's rewind the clock now to 60 years ago. There was once a book called The Sorrows of Young Werther. In this famous work from world-renowned master novelist Johann Wolfgang von Goethe, the name of the heroine is Charlotte. Hoping to become a company that is loved by everyone just like Charlotte, the name of our company comes from her nickname, Latte. Latte was founded in 1948, three years after the war ended in Japan. The founder, Takeo Shigemitsu, recognized that the popularity of chewing gum was not only a result of desiring something sweet, but rather that the act of chewing itself is rooted in human instinct. And this led him to embark on manufacturing chewing gum. Latte was the first to insist on using natural chicle as the base ingredient, which led to its great success. In the gum market alone, Latte has produced numerous hits, from its Cool Mint gum, which rose to popularity upon offering researchers in the Arctic an outlet for chewing relaxation, to its Xylitol gum, which was created to improve dental health. Latte's chewing gum business is now number one in Asia and number three in the world. Next, Latte introduced chocolate manufacturing into its repertoire, developed on the ideal of producing the highest quality in international standards. Latte then found success with candy manufacturing, and we developed an altogether new genre for sore throats called throat candy, based on marketing research. Latte has also introduced Yukimi Daifuku as an ice cream that sells even in the winter, and excited the world with the drinkable ice cream called Coolish. Our mother biscuits were one of the first cookies to appeal to health-minded consumers, 
and our choco pie was the first convenient soft cake. In this way, Latte's history is the history of our hit products, and we have a unique corporate philosophy that lies in the background of each of our hits. This corporate philosophy can be thought of as three key words that are directly connected to Latte's current success. The first is quality. The quality of Latte's products can only be realized upon quick and stable production using carefully selected ingredients through optimal methods. Thus, we have introduced unique manufacturing technology developed in-house into all Latte factories in Japan. And we have achieved Latte quality using the newest automation techniques. The Odawa factory is positioned on the front lines of Latte's chocolate supply in Japan. And we added two new buildings in 2010 to establish a one-stop shop for chocolate manufacturing, from processing the cacao beans to producing various products. The second keyword is originality. No other company emphasizes originality as much as Latte. One example is Koala's March. This best-selling product entices consumers with a hexagonal package and cute koala illustrations and is now sold in over 70 countries in the world. The most original aspect of Koala's March is the biscuit shell. The koala illustrations are printed on the shell with caramel sauce, and the shells are then baked using Latte's own technology so that they become hollow and can be filled with chocolate. This unique process creates a one-of-a-kind light biscuit texture. There are now over 400 different koala illustrations, and new designs are being added all the time. The third key word is user-oriented. Latte always values our customers' voices. For example, our Lotteria restaurants were developed in response to our customers' desire to eat a quick meal that is both inexpensive and delicious. The first Lotteria was built in 1972 and was one of the first fast food restaurants to open in Japan. Ever since its introduction of the long-selling product called the Shrimp Burger, Lotteria has continued to be loved by its customers due to its development of unique products using local ingredients, like Krispy Kreme donuts, Ginza Cozy Corner, and Mary's Chocolates, Latte continues to meet its customers' desire to enjoy a fulfilling life. Beginning with the Latte Minayoshi Dai Country Club, Latte has fulfilled our customers' desire to get inspiration and a taste of a dream through sports with our sports and leisure facilities. The Chiba Latte Marines, who shined as champions in Japan in 2005 and 2010, hope to contribute to the promotion of sports culture and to a lively society through professional baseball. In response to the desire for a luxurious time for adults, we opened our first hotel in Japan, Latte City Hotel, in Tokyo's Kinshicho neighborhood, a perfect location for catching a great view of the popular new attraction, the Tokyo Sky Tree. We have prepared each room with a theme invoking our Koala's March Biscuits. In the Charlotte Chocolate Factory on the first floor, our guests can enjoy a menu filled with unusual foods that use chocolate. Economic development across Asia is increasing, and Latte has succeeded in breaking into Asian markets. Latte, which was born in Japan and has now grown into a representative venture group in Korea, continues its expansion across the globe. The biggest challenge in the global economy in recent years is the increase in buying power due to the remarkable economic growth in Asian countries. The countries across Asia have been known as a center for supply of materials and labor force, but the number of consumers seeking a rich lifestyle is increasing rapidly. Latte has built local factories in Thailand, Vietnam, and Indonesia. We have been manufacturing blister packs and the like in accordance with the differing circumstances in each individual country. At the same time, we have been working hard to increase the recognition and spread of xylitol gum 
through awareness campaigns regarding xylitol's cavity-preventing effects directed at children in these countries. There are normally two distribution channels in Southeast Asia. The first is modern trade, like hypermarkets and supermarkets. Latte is utilizing the sales know-how that it has cultivated in Japan to boost local sales, such as mass displays, installation of shelves in front of the register, POP, and the use of mannequins. The second is called traditional trade, and this includes small, individually run stores called mom and pop shops. Latte has approached this traditional trade mode with a direct sales method, in which salesmen directly carry around products to the stores and enter into negotiations and collect payments for goods on the spot. Now let's look at the activities of Latte's local salesmen and women in the countries around Asia. They begin their workday with a morning assembly, here, the direct sellers confirm their individual sales goals for the day and head out to meet their customers in matching uniforms, riding bikes loaded with products. In Asian countries where traffic can be bad, the departure of the direct sales team has become a completely familiar scene. Traditional trade carries a great deal of weight in the markets of Southeast Asian countries, and thus Latte aims to employ a direct sales force of 3,000 people in Southeast Asia by 2014 in order to further strengthen our selling power in this region. Teaming up with Wedel, the number one chocolate company in Poland, Latte has entered the market in Europe, the birthplace of confectionaries in hopes of spreading latte products throughout the European market. Among the regions of North, Central and South America, latte established its first overseas presence in America in 1979 and has continued by forging into the market of Brazil, which is currently attracting the world's attention due to the upcoming Olympics and FIFA World Cup. Since our founding in 1948, we here at Latte have continually faced unending challenges on the road to realizing our dreams. From Japan to Korea, North America, China, Russia, Southeast Asia, Europe, and South America, we will continue to challenge ourselves to keep growing. Latte. We are Latte.